graduate course, and we have we have been working together for so many years. So we really are a good team. Uh, Ms. Deirdre Heidi was uh, our third teammate. At uh, this time, we're going to change it for uh, and we have the professional who will come to be with us. Uh, it's always a pleasure seeing young people uh, that are interested, <coughs> not in judging as, 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 as is, but in forced evaluation, evaluation in general. Forced evaluation, without arguing to be able to judge later on, but we have to discriminate between the two purposes. Uh, if you're breeders, young breeders, or will be young breeders, uh, you have to be able to evaluate and assess quality of the horses that you want to breed. And you have to set a certain vision, a certain goal as to what kind of a horse you want to breed. For this, you have to learn everything about horse evaluation. I'm sure that Claudia have uh, mentioned a uh, few things and probably there's more to say. Uh, as far as judging the judging in, 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 uh, in shows, that's a different story. Different story, of course, you have to be able to evaluate the horses, but the purpose is totally different. Meaning that you can go and judge a show and you will get a champion and uh, a, a, a stallion that you prefer or a man that you prefer a champion. But at the same time, this would not be the kind of horse you want to bring. So this is important. We have to differentiate between the two purposes. Uh, club is a breeder, I'm a breeder. But we were going to ring together, and we did that hundreds of times. Uh, we pick up, we pick up horses that are not her taste, nor my taste. But they are the best in the show, and we agree on this, so they are put champions of first in their class. But when you go back home, well, we think twice about it, whether this horse is going to be suitable for you or suitable for me. That's a different story. Uh, it's a long process. I mean, learning horse evaluation is a long process. It's not only what you read in paper or courses you attend. It's the experience you gain along. You have to be open-minded. You have to be very critical. If you're a breeder, you have to be very critical in your breeding program. You will be the first one to criticize the horses and to identify your handicaps or mistakes you have uh, in your herd so that you can eventually uh, get over these problems and, and, and eliminate them. A breeder is a selector. The horse have, uh, have uh, evolved, as we all know the history of the Arabian, has evolved through centuries, <coughs> centuries. And the natural selection did, or Mother Nature did its job. So they got, uh, Mother Nature ended up by producing the Arabian horse, which is the most best the best Arabian horse, that, and the best horse that can suit and live in very harsh conditions, like Saudi Arabia, for instance, or Sham, because, I mean, we are not going to discuss now the origin of the Arabian, but the natural selection have eliminated most of the bad horses, and the good horses were able to survive, like, like the law of nature uh, uh, evolution, uh, that we all know about. But following this, there is a man-made selection that was made. And it started where the natural selection ended. In the, in the sense of, <coughs> uh, if, you, if you look back in, 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 in Chippe Gizir and uh, uh, the Arabian Peninsula, the horses were used by the tribes to Poor, herds or provide herds or herds or other 
الترحال من مكان لمكان they were they were bedwetted so they were continuously moving and their forces was part of their life system <coughs> and of course wars ورغاز وفتح الإسلام كل ذا كان على ظهر رخصان so so in other words it can it it used to be uh, uh, a war machine if you want to say it's a, it's a it's a war machine now this of course is obsolete so the horse has become a luxury uh, to the society to us and that's why what we're doing really now is taking these horses select them in different breeding programs and try to improve the quality as we see it, okay? So we have a different purposes. The horse in the past had the use. Today, it does not have the same use, but we are creating races. We are creating marathons and and we created also the show ring so that we can emphasize the prettiness of this horse. So this is very important. This is just a little bit of an introduction that to tell everybody that horse evaluation is very important. Whether you're going to be a breeder, whether you're going to be a judge, or you're going to be just a, a bystander appreciating the horse, you have to understand the horse correctly. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And Methad has done a super job by collecting this and I support him all the way. back to Meta because he prepared something <laughs> nice for you. <laughs> it's an appreciation because oh uh, you know how much we appreciate you are here and Thank uh, it's you. a that's big honor for me. That's very kind, that's very kind. So for me it's a <laughs> special moment because Dr. Nasser is my mentor. I'm, I'm happy to be one of his students. We started together seven years ago, if you remember, with uh, Les Salmon. It was the start, it's true. <laughs> and it's uh, continued, I hope it continues forever. Forever, inshallah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so very much. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you so much. I'm honored, actually. Uh, it has been a long road the last two years. Thanks God, I've been uh, awarded by so many uh, host communities in the state, uh, <coughs> the Breeders Alliance, the Permit Society, the World Championship uh, Organizing Committee, Abu Dhabi, uh, the AHA, the AHO, uh, and finally, uh, in our last meeting, we were also honored. Uh, and this is, uh, I suppose, the end of my judging. Uh, uh, career. I'm still going to be very active in uh, meetings like this and education and, and seminar. I um, hope so. I will, inshallah. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, the, you gain experience and experience is very important, but you have to deliver this to the newcomer so that they would not lose too much time in finding the way. So once they have some guidance, I think it will shorten the time where they can uh, excel and show their abilities and their talents. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amit. So we are just at the point of the famous question of Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last, no, it was not last year. It was 2015. Yes. yes. And I just came to the point of the championship where the stallions were facing each other and uh, then I have to tell you, I was standing in front of these two stallions and looking at them very close by and in championships, I told you, it's not about points. Championship is a different story. Championship is like a new show. So you compare directly, not like in the class with points, you compare horses directly. And it's the moment of the show also and the, the, the daily performance which makes your decision in the final moment. And 
Paris is very hard and it's very narrow. And I was standing there and both of them were looking at me very close. So I had on one hand the bay, which was looking at me and sleeping. I mean, really sleeping. He was just of closing his eyes and, you know, he's a little bit sicker here in the throat ledge and just the little details, maybe a little bit more... Um, a little bit more boring in the face and the other one was facing me this is my personal opinion huh? facing was making a big neck he was very dry he was very alert masculine looking around snorting he looked at my decision was done i mean this was just the point i compared and in the last moment i changed what i was sure not to do and this is how championship, um, how championships on this high level can can be. It's a, just a new show. It's just a new game, and it's another day. So, you see many horses which gain a lot of points in conformation, legs, and they can win. But in the championship, you need this extra, this extra sparkle, and the horse has to touch you also in a certain moment. And then at this moment, this horse has to convince you, and then you choose. And of course, I understand every choice, because this was very narrow. And I also understand and I appreciate also if you took the third step, because all three of them were of very high quality. And uh, every day it can be different. So that's my story about this uh, moment. What, what are uh, the plans now? I mean, do you still, uh, do you still have a presentation to do? No, we are just yeah, opening. We just so we have an open discussion now? Yes. Okay, super. I would like to add to what uh, Claudia just mentioned. <coughs> and I don't want really to take uh, how, how much time do we have. Like two days? <laughs> no? At least, at least. <laughs> at least. Uh, <clears throat> judging now for shows, I mean, I'm not talking about evaluation as a breeder, but judging shows now, has become extremely difficult and stressful for many, many reasons. One of the reasons is the higher quality of horses that we have all the time. Problem two. The type changes all the time. So, 30 years ago, it was like the Russian horse that was dominating the shoe scene. That was followed by uh, the Golden Cross Shaklan, if you remember, and and his uh, dynasty. And then the Polish horse came very strong, and they won everything. And uh, in 2003, 2004, 2005, it was the time for the Egyptian wars. Uh, that's when Muladid came in, Ben Said, Agilag, Agilgela, my horse, my horse, several other horses. This was the time of the Egyptian horses. But soon this was replaced by, by what we call now the Universal Horse. Universal Horses, uh, example is Marawan and Justice who has from everything he has Russian, he has Polish, he has Egyptian. And the look of the horses had changed. I mean, if you look, the champion was Shaklan, who was a world champion, he was a world champion, Kubenik, who was a world champion years ago. If you bring that in today, they're not even qualified, probably, uh, because the taste had changed and the quality of the horses had changed. How long a Marawan whom I admire very much, not only as a stallion, but as his contribution to the horse. He has done, of course, hundreds of babies, but we see the only the best. But still, the ones that we see the best are extremely nice, and he is very consistent. I saw some bad ones too, but this is normal. Uh, but it seems now that uh, this is the trend, this is the hope. So people are going after this. Now, this is, a, this is an important problem. Because if we continue and follow the trend of, let's say, marijuana justice, and I'm telling you I love these horses. I have a reservation on justice in a few things, but I love what they, they've done to these 
trend to, to the Arabian world. But if you follow that trend, all of us, the venture of the gym pool that we're working on is going to be smaller and smaller by the time. And then we found no other way except to go out by line breathing up crosses and so on. So who's, who's driving the trends? Who's driving the trends? The driving the trends, that's a very good question. I mean, actually, nobody's really, in my opinion, and maybe Claudia has something to say about it. It's not, uh, it's not somebody that is forcing people to, 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 to follow the trend. What happens is like Maraman, for instance. He goes and won the senior world championship among many other championships. Then his sons and daughter are stuck winning the same thing. And now he has breathing hundreds of men per year. So we go to a class of a year or two years. And I, I did that one time in Abu Dhabi where there was about 17 horses in the yearling colts. 12 or 13 of them were Maraj, the son of Marama. Uh, so once you have so many Marawans in a class, one of them has to win. And statistically, uh, so if he wins, and it's class after, he wins, another Marawan son wins. So people will start following this. They want to win. They are driven, people are driven by uh, the quality of the horses and the winners in show. And that's very, to me, it's, it's very bad. For two reasons. The reason that I mentioned that the gym pool is going to be smaller and smaller. And the second reason is that the judges, by choosing all the time these horses, they are eliminating other quality of the horses. And that's why I'm sure that Claudia would agree with me, not necessarily the winner of a championship, say Paris for instance, would be the best breeder, and the loser or who did not participate at all in Paris would be a bad breeder. It's, there's no rule for that. And, and, yeah, and we have seen so many horses that are world champion, Benderas, Dakar, Dakar, uh, Dakar, uh, Marquis. What did they produce? Well, Look maybe not. you can not much, Look but not. you can you can uh, you could blame not all you could blame the breeder, right? But it's a point. Meanwhile, there is other horses that are staying home, or they've never won Paris, and this produces better horses. Anything to add? No, not really, but I think uh, also promotion and marketing plays a very big role. So, unfortunately, breeders, it's, it's easy to inform yourself on magazines and shows. So you get all the newsletters, there is a lot of advertisement, the champion here, the champion there, which is good in a way. You have to be informed, but this is only one part. The other part is your own responsibility for breeding. So the selection you do shouldn't be only based on championship results. But this is actually what happened, because it seems very easy. I take champion mare A and choose a world champion B, and what is coming out is a world champion wrong. I mean, this has nothing to do with breeding. This is not, a, and also, uh, you can cover 50 mares with one stallion. Of course, you will have one, two, three good ones if you have a certain quality. But is this really knowledgeable breeding? You as small breeder, I am as a small, I, I am a small breeder. I, I do maybe five babies, six a year. I have to have out of this six one, two very, very good ones. I cannot make 100 babies like in Poland and one pianissima is coming out and 50 maybe are medium quality. Exactly. Where is the market of, for these horses? So the smart thing is not to select by titles choose the right stallion for your mare. This can be